React India. Okay. Like everything on the internet, our data is fragmented, but here also there were some hiccups. Um, I think more and more consumers, as we are interacting with the internet, we are seeking for privacy-based internet, the internet that we want to use. Like the internet, when I go in, uh, just recently I was accessing an app, I downloaded the app, and uh, the first thing it requested me was I want network permissions. And I was like, why do you need network permission for like an e-shopping uh, app? So that immediately I lost trust with that application, and I clicked uninstall. I didn't go further with that app, right? Why is that so? Because it's very important for me as a user that I feel safe and secure and how my data is being managed in the application that I'm using. No matter, there must be very uh, wonderful e-commerce application giving me a lot of discounts, a lot of uh, personalized uh, apparels, but I still did not feel to move forward in that digital journey because I didn't feel safe to share my data with them. And that's very important for developers like us that as we build now applications, we really have to put user at the center because consumers demand for it. And in general, I think developers like us, it's not like we don't want to put privacy at the center, right? We're trying to find balance between what is convenient for user to try on my application versus also asking too many questions or going through a consent uh, flow so that they share more data about themselves with ease. But this is where exactly uh, affinity comes into play. We're trying to solve this problem, age-old problem of how do you all start with privacy first, but still build digital experiences which is seamless. And in the next few minutes, I'm hoping I take you through this journey of how a user can organize all their data, create a 360-degree view of themselves with a digital identity that they can cryptographically prove control over. And why, why that is important? It's important because then you don't need any intermediary. If I can, through public key, private key cryptography, control, prove that I own this identifier. Like today, I have a phone number or email that I use on multiple applications as my identifier. I was having a discussion with somebody else in the hallway. Like, is that really you? No, right? Like, I don't introduce myself as my phone number is so-and-so with my friend. Right? In real world, I bring my whole holistic identity to that experience, to that context. And then I share what is relevant for that context to get exchange in exchange for value. But that experience right now is not replaceable on the internet. Because the internet was not built with that identity layer uh, to start with. Now, if you had an identity that you can control and prove mathematically that you are in control of that identity, then without any intermediary, you can actually establish trust with applications and other peers on the internet. And this is our vision of holistic identity where a user can organize their information and uh, discover, collect, store, and share, and, and eventually maybe monetize that data as well. And why is this important? Uh, imagine, let's say, all of us developers are building a B2C new app. We want consumers to come connected with our applications. And what is the first thing you would like to do? I think first thing we like drop in a login uh, of in some sort to get some contactable information about them, like their email, their phone number, so that you can start a relationship with them. And then you typically try to integrate with either other places where the user has data or create screens. Right? I call it like death by thousand forms. Right? I don't know how many forms have I filled to tell my name is so, my age is so, I live in this location. Why do we have to prove our identity repetitively on the internet? Like, if I could organize and have control over my data in one place, I could avoid all that and just fast forward to the uh, transaction that I want to do. And this is what we uh, are trying to enable through a set of products and tools that we are building at Affinity called Affinity Trust Network. At the heart of Affinity Trust Network is a vault, which is an edge storage where user cryptographically can control their identity and information. It always remains in control of their device and uh, them, so it never, the keys never leave the device. So that way it's very safe and secure and uh, authentic for the user. And then uh, with a set of internet scale API backplane, we are offering these services to developers so that they can interact with the vault. So user as a consumer will manage their information in a vault developer who needs this information to build better applications and experiences through using affinity element stack can request this information. 
Now is element stack something new that you have to learn or do? No. It's very familiar ways on how you're building applications. Those interfaces are being brought through uh, as affinity element stack. Like for example, when you do login, social logins, you work with OIDC flow. Uh, affinity element stack will provide you mechanisms to configure, add a project, create a login configuration, and then add affinity login to your application, which works on OIDC flow. So what it means is that if you want to start working with decentralized technology, if you want to use digital data in your applications, you don't have to up, up, up learn, like upskill yourself a lot. If you start using element stack, you can start getting the benefits of these decentralized technologies in your applications. And how does this all come together for a use case? I come back to that one use case we discussed now. Everybody needs to onboard an application. How can I reimagine that experience? by not having to do a contactable information in one place and then again a lot of information about myself. Can I do a passwordless authentication to that application where I bring my whole self, I bring my identity. Instead of an attribute based uh, authentication on the internet, can I bring identity based authentication to the internet where it's not just authentication. I'm sharing who I am and I'm sharing all the other information that is relevant for the transaction in that one click. So what is that one click that enables the passwordless uh, sign-in experience? So let me just uh, also connect that with how what is the world that we live in today? So we, we all enabled single sign-on or reuse one digital account to access digital services on the internet. And that's on the left side here, the social login uh, as an analogy, as a, as a pattern, right? And there what happens if you really un try to unbundle that and what's happening there is that applications are trusting uh, identity provider and that identity provider is standards compliant so that that's very good for developers and then but then it's also manages and keeps the records of the user in the identity provider so i am giri user let's say xyz in a provider's namespace that's how who i am is uh, available to the internet in that particular ecosystem so my identity is actually issued by the provider and wherever I'm going, because I have to meet that mediator has to be part of that flow. They are like my shadow I'm carrying with all transactions that I do on the internet. Whether I'm ordering a pizza, whether I'm uh, hailing a ca card share ride or registering for an event like this, if they allow social login, they probably know more about me than I do about myself. But if I turn this upside down, and what if the identity provider still has to do the role of transporting this uh, my attributes about myself in an open standard format, but actual assertions of who I am, what attributes do I have, what traits do I have, what preferences do I have, if that is actually coming from me. And there are other issuers of this authoritative sources who will issue this data to me, right? There could be government agencies, there could be other, my place of work can issue a credential that Giri works at Affinity. That's a credential I can carry with me in my vault. So I can manage the digital credentials issued to me and then I can self-sign it as well. I can attest that these are my credentials. Like many times we get a paper document and we have to sign it ourselves to confirm that it's authentic. I am presenting this information. So same way I with my keys in my vault can sign that credential when I'm presenting that credential to an application. And by reimagining this role of identity provider, user gets to control their identity and who they are and then present it independent of a provider. And still a provider of their choice can still bring that information, transport that to an application in an open standard format so that the applications don't have to... Uh, use any new tools or recode or do anything very uh, different than what they, what they are already doing. And this is, I think, path breaking in my mind. Like this has not happened in the internet so far, right? Uh, whenever we think of identity provider, we think they will manage the user records and also transport. But if you can split that, it not only creates a new opportunity for new world, but it also allows us to incrementally add on top of federated identity provider. You don't have to replace your existing investments in federated identity provider because it works seamlessly on that standard with them. But it also opens new opportunities and new ways of directly interacting with a user's digital credentials. So just to show you what that experience could look like, if you think of an application where we drop in an affinity login button, 
it could request lot of information about me in the same process and I could uh, unlock my vault, share that information or select what I don't want to share and un uncheck that and voila, I am in the application not just with my contactable information but more, prof more information about myself to get more personalized services on the application and it it's a mutual value for the developers as well as me on the internet. So what you just saw was Affinity Login, our flagship product. We just went in uh, beta last week. So very excited to talk to you more about this product. It abstracts all the decentralized identity uh, emerging technologies from you as a developer. It enables, you saw a passwordless experience and it can create new user experiences, new use cases. Think of checkouts, think of any time where you have to fill in an information multiple times, right? I always say like, Verify once, use it multiple times. Now you can have information once in your vault and you never have to type it again. That kind of experiences we can build and that too with an added advantage that it's all built on open protocols and open standards. And so this, this is what your application architecture would look like if you use Affinity Login in your application. As React developers here, we did a workshop yesterday where we, in few minutes, a lot of you were able to build this architecture. So it's very easy to integrate, it's very easy to use. You, we have built higher order libraries like uh, React Auth, which can include the uh, login button on your application and the custom hooks to complete the life cycle of authentication. And uh, we leveraged Passport JS as the middleware and extension of that we have added Affinity uh, uh, as an OIDC provider to uh, Passport uh, JS middleware so that you can easily interact with Affinity login by just going to our Affinity portal, creating a new project, create a new login configuration, update your application configure environment variables with those three uh, attributes and, and your application is ready to uh, enable an Affinity login on your application the same way you saw in the previous video. And what's really happening on the right side is the user managed identity, the one that I showed you the data in a seamless process. So while uh, we continue to build a lot of features on Affinity Trust Network, uh, we are very excited to add uh, very soon uh, data connector framework and decentralized storage, decentralized messaging, basically privacy preserving primitives or building blocks for you so that you don't have to worry about creating that infrastructure. You can take advantage of all this privacy preserving building blocks in your application. So your privacy by design. More and more we are seeing across the world, there's a lot of compliance, a lot of, uh, uh, I would say, intention to protect consumer data. Right? And that can come alive by using infrastructure or technologies like this where user can manage their data and uh, uh, you can build applications still with rich experiences. And so what can you use today? You can use passwordless authentication on your app to just authenticate the user or use single click sign up onboarding experience that we saw with more attributes beyond contactable information. And you can start leveraging more digital credentials in your application. As we build more, uh, inform more connectors on the vault, you'll get more rich data and all of that you'll not have to change any lines of code because it's the, the mechanisms of fetching the data is almost same. So with that, uh, I'll leave you with few resources like we are developer first. So you have command line interface. If you prefer that, you can just go create, uh, it's as simple as affinity start and then you log in with your vault and there you can start creating projects, login configuration and again in few minutes you'll have everything you need to uh, create your uh, application uh, or have enough information to create your application with Affinity. And we, if you're somebody who likes GUI, you can go to Affinity portal, it's portal.affinity.com where you can find uh, every and this all uh, is done to have, help you be more productive. So please give us feedback when you go through it. I would encourage all of you to sign up on portal.affinity.com, download the wall, uh, go through that experience once. On our docs.affinity.com, you'll also have sample labs that you can try immediately. Whether you want to directly like build a simple React app with Affinity login, or you want to integrate with any existing identity provider you might be using like Firebase, Auth0, uh, Cognito, Keycloak, you have step-by-step -step instructions in doing that. I would think for experienced developers like you, it would be like few minutes and you would be done uh, integrating that application. So we look forward to uh, what do you think, what use cases you can build with user really at the center, every data sharing with consent, 
and then uh, integrate it easily in your application. We have a lot of, we love, I'm sure if I did, uh, I might have picked your interest in some areas. If you have more questions, please meet us at the booth. We love to discuss because it's just starting. Uh, we, we, we see a lot of interest already at the booth since yesterday. So thank you for anyone who's already been there. Uh, we will be running a lot of prizes and in the end there is a mega prize. So please uh, do uh, connect with us at the booth and ask us tough questions uh, on, on how you can use this in your application. So with that, I'd say thank you for your time. Uh, hope you have a great React conference day one as well as day two with all the remaining sessions later in the evening. Uh, in the end, our vision is to make it very easy, make it uh, very simple for everyone to share their data securely and manage it uh, safely and as well as get most value from their data by data exchange with applications who which will be built by developers like you to put really user at the center and uh, with that uh, invite you again to experience our products and let us know what you think thank you very much